Hello guys, welcome to my channel Anime Lovers. Today, we will review the next chapter of the Baki sequel, Son of Ogre. It is the chapter where Baki starts his training ahead of his crucial encounter with his father Yujiro Hama. Now, let's get started. But first, if you are new here, please subscribe, turn on your notification bell and like my video. This chapter starts with Rumina asking himself, Stronger than an elephant. Did you mean this dude? He walks to the table, and after staring a while at the insect, he turns to Baki still confused. This? Yeah, the mantis. At least, at fighting, insects are pros among pros. Wild animals are no match at all. You don't mean, replied Baki. First of all, the difference in body strength is on a whole other level. Body strength? Yeah. Tigers and lions can apparently carry a prey around 800 kilos by dragging it. Giving those guys weigh about 200 kilos is 3 to 4 times their weight at most. Then, how about insects? They carry a prey 7 to 8 times their own weight, long distance to their nest easily and non stop. I suppose your weight is 30 kilos. So, try carrying a 200 kilo man from school right to your house. Romina imagined himself carrying a sumo wrestler and answered to Baki, Nope, I just can't. Baki continued, It's not rare to see servants who can leap over 10 meters, but petty if compared to fleas or grasshoppers. If those guys were of human height, it would be easy for them to jump over 10 story buildings. You should feel it if you catch one with your hands. Several thousands of hours, but your fingertips can still feel how strong those guys are. Were they to weigh the same, they will be unbeatable. With a single kick of that leg, we just get hold by those four legs. If they are impregnable block, if ripped by those fans, one can't get away. Rumina suddenly felt fear. After giving Rumina an elaborated explanation of various insects that could be unbeatable, he then moved to the insects on the table, the mantis. Among them, he is the pro fighter. Even the ancient Chinese can borrow the mantis way of fighting when creating Tang Lang Quan, the famous praying mantis style. Strike, ground, bite, ferocity, the ultimate school of dealing with anything. He is the faultless perfect fighter. If these guys were over 100 kilos, they would prey upon African elephants. But it's tiny, Rumina replied. I will make it big. Right back in. Up to 100 kilos? Questioned Rumina. Here and here. The distant American, and also non existent as of now. The Golden Age. I summon the Iron Michael of Champions era. Here, to the Tamagawa Bands. Michael, who doesn't exist in our world, has appeared. Thus, I can create anything. A 100 kilo praying mantis can be created too. Baki remained in a fighting stance and very cautious of the praying mantis. Suddenly, the mantis moved. Baki leans backward and then throws a kick. That kick happens to be the same kick that defeated Iron Michael. However, it looks as if it wasn't so decisive against the praying mantis. He gets thrown to the wall and has nowhere to run to. Romina, observing the scene from a safe distance, thought to himself, Baki looks strange. I can't see what Baki's mind has created. The imaginary mantis that strains him. Baki kept being agitated. His face moved. He's looking upward. Just what monster does he see? Before he was done wondering at the size and shape of the monster Baki had created in his mind, Baki rolled to the left. By the way, dodging the blow from the mantis, he lands and quickly leaps to another corner of the room. It's just like Baki said. The 100 kilo praying mantis is stronger than the 200 kilo tiger or lion. Stronger by far. Baki suddenly started acting weirdly. What's that? It can be. Was he caught by the mantis? After a few seconds of trying to free himself, he kicks the mantis in the head with the intention of making it let him go. The kick reached the chin. It was a clean hit. He could just say he would easily deal with the mantis. He could just stamp over the mantis. He saw them messages to himself. He looks exhausted. Against the human-sized prey mantis, normal bear-handed technique.
things have no effect. Baki's movement can't be called bare-handed techniques anymore. In that dark room, Baki kept moving, attacking Finn Air, defending against Finn Air, which attacks him. This is what I was witnessing while trying not to miss a single move. Following Baki's dazzling movement, he settled on them in order to see the mantis, just like when you see the oyster, you sort of know the form of what Baki is like. When you see the bookcase, you can sort of know how big the book is. And just like how, when you have a pendant like this, you can imagine the other part to be like this. I was starting to see it. In the empty space, little by little, the figure that should be there, little by little, by setting, I was descending it. The mantis that Baki San has created, an insect that weighed more than 100 kilos. I saw it virtually before my eyes. It was so ominous. It made me smile that Ebakisan is having a showdown with it. The one who is said to be the world best, Baki's father, has beaten a dinosaur like African elephants. Yet, however strong the elephant might be described, that's just about putting its size to its advantage. Suppose that elephant were insect size, there would be at most sick worm strength. It came all of a sudden. Baki's masterful high kick. The speed, the timing, all on this computer, the precise heat, it felt like a kill. However, instead of the mantis, it was Baki who was thrown to the ground. Oh, I see, he thought. The bad premonition came true. You can see that the head of the mantis has next to no brain. So normally, with that high kick, what would happen to a human? The cerebral concussion didn't happen. Head hits won't have any effect. That's what Baki realized. Before the mantis could make his next move, Baki hopped onto his neck and grabbed him to choke it. Yeah, never let go of it, shouted Lumina. What the hell is looking at me? Grabbed from the back, it stares at me. And it's not just that, it's awfully skilled. I'm gonna get eaten. Whoa, this strength, this might, it's no use. His strength can't rival an insect. At that very moment, Baki used his legs as support and moved his own bones to get rid of the grabs of the mantis. He thought to himself, no matter who opposes me, be it a man or a beast or an insect, the way to deal with them is the same. The way is decided, the usual combat. He kept hitting the mantis, but the mantis's body was just so hard. It feels like metal, but I'll fight. Great, Romina thought. Whatever comes up, I will fight. Even if nothing comes up, I will fight. Those vital weak points and shit. Right after he was thinking about which strategy to use, the mantis tried biting back his legs. Baki then tactically took the mantises by the opposite joint. Break it! Romina shouted. But before Baki could celebrate, he was thrown away by the mantis. The mantis in the box could then set free. Baki learned a crucial thing at that very moment. The bare-handed techniques have no effect. He was covered in blood and completely beaten up. Rumina couldn't take it anymore, thought. This is not normal. If it went down to this, it can't be done. However real your imagined enemy would become, there is nobody here in reality. So whatever may be in thin air, wherever you imagine, there is only a phantom you created. By fighting that beast, there can be no bout, no duel. It's not supposed to come to that. He shouted. Pakistan, it's enough. Enough. You shouldn't go that far. Pakistan, it's unreasonable. But it was too late. Baki had gone too far to listen to him. He neglected my worry. Yet, his opponent is becoming more real. Rumina could almost feel its body well. Both Baki and the Mantis kept fighting the mantis having the advantage. With its stereo vision, it could locate Baki wherever he was. Just as I thought, an opponent with those doesn't have blind spots. Wherever this guy faces, this room from corner to corner is within its field of view. There is no escape anywhere. Suddenly, Baki felt ashamed of himself. Escape? Am I here to escape? He thought. It's for him. Am I going to seek an escape in a fight against him? No, no kidding. Think. 
if you are fighting a mantis, the original one, in the continuous exchange of blows, Baki hit the mantis in the neck and for the first time it felt an impact. Wow, he replied. I feel it at the base of his neck, a softer feeling, a strike I did. This. But hold on, that's Tang Lang Kwan. Hmm. I guess I will just try it on him. He then poses in the same stance as Chinese Kempo Masters, who uses the Tang Lang Kwan. Baki's posture has changed. It was something like this, and now it's like this. The legs were straight, and now they are as if he was squatting. But that's not exactly a fighting pose. It rather looks like he's mimicking the mantis. The world of fighting is savage. While other types of contests have unrealistic thinking in them, there is something that bare-handed fighting has that others don't have, and that is who is stronger. Baseball and basketball players just can't compete, but bare-handed fights are another story. Well, you can compete within the same kind of sport, but also with other kind of practitioners. You can even fight against different species. An inquisitive mind meeting human strength can look anywhere you may have among different species, which include imaginary giant insects. And finally, Pakistan lived into a different world and is treading his wings into a different species fighting style. The mantis leaped forward to attack him, but this time around, Pakistan could counter it with a strike exactly at the same position he hit earlier. The mantis tried counter attacking, but he hit him again. The mantis for a second time got thrown to the wall and didn't quite understand what was happening. He's closer now, Rumina thought. Do you see this, Rumina? They don't have natural enemies in their insect world. They never get attacked or anything. Strong at attacking, they don't have any defense or preeminence skills when it's down to that. Baki, all confident now, said to Rumina, Move aside, Rumina. Baki will win, he thought. The exchange of blows kept going on for a while, and Rumina seeing those weird moves wouldn't stop himself from thinking what kind of moves were those. Baki could evenly fight with the mantis now and was starting to even get the upper hand. Something is coming into sight. I used to think he was unbeatable. And the best, a perfect fighter. His appearance, this and that. What advantage did they really grant? In his movements, I see it there, his certain weak points. I'm accustomed now to them. My body responds to the right way. I wonder how does this body work? The body would teach me. Little by little, Baki became somehow different. His face is more on the edge. His movements aren't uncertain. That's farther than mantis versus mantis, but a very different something. Yes, it almost looks like bird versus insect. And suddenly, the mantis who used to be ferocious is mostly escaping now. Baki is getting even more confused. He was looking up, but now he's getting calm. His glare is even lowering. It clearly looked as if he had seen the weak point and was on the edge of winning. Rumina, he said, once you find a weak point, 100 kilos or the actual size, it's all the same. He let go of the mantis he had caught up in his hands. Right? He questioned the real mantis. Oh, here he is. He then used his fingers and did what seemed like an exchange of blows with the mantis and obviously got the perfect victory. It's now back in flawless victory. This brings us to the end of this chapter. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and liking this video. In my next video, we'll learn about the birth of Yujiro Hama, the strongest man on earth. Do you think it was a natural birth? We'll discover that in the next chapter. Stay tuned.